Good afternoon and welcome to another Taffy Live. My name is Sabrina and I'll be your host this afternoon. A little bit about me, I'm an assistant production manager with Big Jump Entertainment, but more importantly, I work outreach with Taffy to help bring all of you guys the latest and greatest from what's arguably the best industry to work in. And speaking of work, we have our annual job fair coming up this week. Uh, in less than a week, uh, doing virtual this year on our Discord server, just like last year. So be sure to join if you have not already joined our server. Um, join us uh, to talk directly to your favorite studios. And trust me, you won't want uh, to miss your chance to get to know all of the incredible recruiters that are going to be stopping by. Not sure which booth to check out first? Well, we got a solution for that. Today, I've got Andrew Stramitis and Jody Jessup from Guru Studios in Toronto here to talk about why their studio is a must for everyone to stop by. Andrew, Jody, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Sabrina. Happy to be yeah. here. Yeah. Thanks, Sabrina. <laughs> yeah, no, I was so excited when they said that uh, we were going to get to chat with you today. Um, and so to start off, uh, for those at home watching uh, who might not know that much about Guru, uh, why don't we start by you guys telling us about some of the projects you guys have uh, worked on lately, something that people would instantly recognize. Sure. Well, probably uh, our most recognizable show would be Paw Patrol. We, uh, we got it in 2012. We did not know it was going to be the phenom <laughs> that it was going to be. <clears throat> A lightning in a jar. We you sometimes refer to these types of things. Like who knew dogs dogs doing rescues? Who knew? Um, but yeah, we we uh, Spin Master uh, Toys was it was a much smaller toy company at the time. They're huge now, obviously. Um, but we helped them develop the show and 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 add our personal you know uh, creative touch to it. And we worked together in a creative partnership to get that to what you know it as now. And it's been an incredible ride. Ten years of the steadiest work you could possibly mm -hmm. ask for, which is incredibly rare in this industry. Pre Paw Patrol, you know, PP, if you want to call it that, um, <laughs> uh, was uh, it was a different time. The, like, uh, like I, for instance, I didn't get hired immediately out of school. Uh, there wasn't as many jobs out there and I wasn't, you know, uh, blown anyone's doors off with my performance quite yet. So it was tougher to make a name for yourself. Um, very, very different now. The We're in an era of what we call the streaming wars. And there's so much content out there and uh, there, there's way more opportunities for uh, new animators and, and people in the animation industry to join the workforce. So if you're new and you're just graduating and you're looking to get in, congratulations. It's a way better time than 10 years ago. Let me tell you. But it's been an, it's been an incredible 10 years. Paw Patrol being uh, the, the backbone of that has been incredible. Um, it's given a lot of us the security and knowing where, you know, what where the next gig is coming from just season after season of work that we, we are comfortably buying homes and things like that. So if you're looking to build a fruitful career and, and have longevity and stability, Guru is a fantastic place for that. And, and Paw Patrol has been a big part of that. Not to mention oh. several of our other shows, if you want to mention those, Jody. Yeah, I just want to chime in and say you were absolutely right. I just bought a place. Oh. And when I walked in, when we looked at the place in the kids' room, of course, what books are on the shelf? <laughs> Paw Patrol. So that I was like, yes, I have my in with these people. And uh, I have to say Paw Patrol was probably a big influence in obtaining my first property. Uh, so I'm pretty excited <laughs> to be part of that team. Um, it's instantly recognizable, Andrew Hay. Like I think, uh, you know, everybody knows Paw Patrol. And it's mm -hmm. just one of the great projects we're working on. We're doing some exciting work we just released or about to re about to be released on HBO Max on May 9th, Big Blue, uh, oh, 2D, 2D animated series that uh, our own beloved Jima Gariba developed and you know was uh, co-directed uh, and it looks awesome. It is so funny. It is such a great, cute show. Um, so that's coming out soon. We've got a new property with Sesame Street Mecca Builders, which is uh, your beloved Sesame characters as robots. Um, and it is absolutely hilarious. Andrew could tell you more about that project and the animation that's come out of it. It's hilarious. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, that's coming out later this year as well. Uh, and we just started a new uh, 3D series called Dino Daycare. We're doing that in partnership with Laughing Wild, which is Chris, a Chris Nee property or a Chris Nee company and uh, Netflix. So 
um, exciting work there and we're hiring like mad right now. We're in that phase of the production where we're looking for animators. Uh, so, you know, we're looking for layout artists, we're looking for previous artists. So that's the stage we're at in the show. And, you know, we want to hear from you. We want to meet you on Monday. Um, yeah. So what, what I'm hearing is it's the perfect time for Taffy to be hosting a job absolutely. fair because you guys are ready for us. We are absolutely. And just a little bit about our booth on, on Monday. Um, we will have our recruitment team there, of course. So you'll see me all day. Uh, but we also have separated it into chunks of time per discipline. So from 10 to 12, you can come in and meet Michelle Junkin, who's art director on our new Dino Daycare series, and our creative director of the Studio of Design, Brandon Scott. They are going to be specifically looking at design work. So if you're a designer and you want to have your portfolio looked at in, you know, a five minute sort of speed dating sort of scenario with uh, Michelle or Brandon, this is your opportunity. Then from 12 to two, we've got Chris Babinski, who's our studio creative director of assets. So are you a modeler, rigger, texture painter, surfacer? Come and talk to Chris, you know, he wants to see you. And then we've got Andrew from two to 4 p.m. taking a look at animation portfolios, meeting animators. This is your opportunity to meet Andrew our studio creative director of animation. It's gonna be a blast. And if it's anything like last year, you know, we just, the queue didn't stop. Um, hey, Andrew, it was uh, it was a nonstop day at Taffy and it was, it was pretty cool to meet everybody. So please come um, and, you know, bring your work. We look forward to meeting everybody. Totally, it's very exciting to meet, uh, you know, new talent and those looking to join the workforce for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's awesome that you guys have specific people coming in at different times so that people who are looking for specific stuff can get that time. Absolutely. And if, you know, if you're outside of those disciplines, if you're in production, we want to meet you too. There'll be, you know, myself and our senior talent acquisition specialist there all day to meet you, take your portfolio, get your information uh, so that we can follow up with you. We're looking forward to it. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's get into the nitty gritty of this. So what makes Guru such a great studio? Why why do we want to come work for Guru beyond all the stuff we've already talked about? Oh, well, in general, just fun projects. Like really, like you can't beat fun. That's a that's a a, a saying that uh, a dear old friend told me one time several years ago, and I I basically live by it now. Um, if, if what you're doing isn't fun, then may, perhaps it's time to reevaluate and make a change. And we, we, we have fun as we play, you know, when, when you're outside of work, but we also have fun all day, every day while we're working. And really, how do you beat that? If you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life is sort of another exactly. saying that's out there. Right. So, um, fun projects. Number one, um, Jody mentioned Mecha Builders, a new show from Sesame Street where it's like Cookie Monster and Elmo as mechanized robots. Um, it's it's so cool to take iconic characters like that that are so well established that I grew up watching and loving. Who doesn't love Muppets? And like now having the opportunity to analyze them and say, hey, now how can we bring them into a CG world but still capture the essence of the character and, and the whimsy and, and the, the charm of them, even though it, they're way less limited now. Um, to bring that into into a CG environment was was super cool, and and working with like universally funny characters like Cookie Monster is just a, is a dream come true, quite frankly. Um, and bringing so much joy to kids that that's such a rewarding part. Every parent I talk to, a lot of them tell me you're my favorite babysitter because like they can just <laughs> plunk their kid in front of the screen and know that they're in good hands because we we generally put out content that has good lessons and good stories that we're, we're very big on story and. We, we make it entertaining. We're all about clear, believable entertainment. That's the, that's the way we like to operate. And that's how we um, foster our artists here and, and get them to, to see the, the bigger picture and, and what to focus on so that their, their work gets stronger and stronger as they, as they continue to work on projects. That's awesome. Did you have anything to add, Jody? Do you what's yeah. what's your favorite thing about Guru? What makes well, it great? I mean, I mean, honestly, it's the people, right? Like from the top down, Everybody cares about contributing 
their best at a creative level. You know, I think even like talking to Yuri Roka, who's the director of Mecha Builders, like he brings so much energy and passion to what he does every day in every aspect of what he does and encourages his team, like, bring me the funny, you know, like show me. Um, mm -hmm. And he inspires them creatively, you know, and that's, that's really cool. Like, mm -hmm. and I know Andrew does that too for like, you know, the entire animation department um, and the studio at large, right? Like Andrew, you know, creates so many beautiful things. We had, I'm going to tell you a little heartwarming story. I'm sorry if I embarrass you, Andrew. Okay. Um, we had, um, you know, we often get fan mail and received uh, some fan mail from someone whose daughter was such a huge Paw Patrol fan, you know, and was sick, like quite quite ill. I think she was had cancer, was going through treatment, um, and just really wanted, you know, I think, I think ultimately maybe they the family was looking for some swag or some kind of like, you know, something cool. Well, I mean, honestly, everyone rallied around this, Andrew in particular, um, and they got a voice record done uh, with a special message just for this girl. Andrew actually animated a scene for her um, to this voice, you know, like of the actual characters, like bananas and sent this video to this little girl uh, who's going through cancer treatment. And I just like, at that moment, I knew I was like, this like, people's hearts are in this work, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. it's truly inspiring. And it's, it makes it, you know, like Andrew said, it makes it fun every day. Like it makes you want to be the best you can be. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's so heartwarming to be able to give back and, and so rewarding to know that we've we've touched somebody and and helped them through such a difficult time. You don't get a whole lot of opportunities like that. But when they come, you better just put everything you got into it. Why not? Like, you know, when the chips are down for someone else, you, you do your best to pull them up. So that, that was a great opportunity to do that. Yeah, no, it's it's wonderful to see these these projects that people just they they love and they become such big parts of their lives. And it's I mean, it's wonderful to be a part of a studio that has opportunities to expand upon that. And it's it's not just about the show. It's about connecting with the community in general. And I love I love that you guys do that. Yeah, we also when speaking of that and speaking of community, we also have I'm so excited to talk about it. And Andrew, Andrew can chime in because we're both on the committee. Uh, we have a charitable organization in our studio now called Guru Gives. And we are partnered with six different charities, local charities, um, and, you know, a variety of different charities. Uh, and we do fundraising initiatives. And we, we've done laptop drives. We've done one-to-one -one mentorships. Uh, we just did a really cool uh, initiative where um, we had, <laughs> we purchased some, you know, ready-made, pots with uh, discs in them to grow wildflowers and then we did a guru packaging of it that was built in with the wildflower seeds so it was seed paper and for every ten dollar donation to one of our charities you got a pot so you know now i've got these five wildflower pots in my house you know i'm like hoping for them to to bloom um, I have keep watch over them, but no seeds are sprouting yet. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, it's just like something really cool to do because then I was like, I'm going to choose the charity that means something to me, you know, that matters to my life because we had our, our choice, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we raised a ton of, ton of cash for, for these charities. It's just something fun, cool, fun and cool to do um, with your colleagues. You know, it's, uh, it's been really rewarding um, and nice to know that we're part of a company that wants to give back. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I, I did the same thing, and uh, my my funds went to Ukraine, who obviously needs it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, our hearts mm -hmm. go to them, of course. Um, but the the initiative is really cool um, because it it also gives us a reason to stay in touch virtually. We're still in this you know pandemic, it, like seem seemingly winding down, luckily. Um, but we're still in it. We're still working entirely remotely. And it's hard to find ways to stay engaged with everyone. And this was also a great opportunity to just have a have something to talk about and show on our on our cameras. Like, hey, here's a little seedling. It's this tall now. That kind of a thing. Yeah. So we, it's a reason to check in and say, hey, how's it growing? You know, that kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> yeah. 
<clears throat> I love the puns. Wonderful. Yeah, no, the I love for the puns. So like, <laughs> yes. Our marketing manager it. is the queen of puns and she is it. a good influence on all of us. That's great. Well, Andrew, you mentioned uh, pandemic and, you know, working from home and things winding down. Uh, how have you guys managed with moving from an in-studio to a, a work from home? Uh, how, how has that affected you guys? And how do you plan on continuing going forward as the pandemic winds down? Is work from home still going to be a viable option within Guru? Uh, are you guys doing what Yowza is doing, closing down studio? Uh, closing down, I, I wouldn't definitely not use that term. We're, we're still very much thriving. Um, in fact, uh, but we are looking to be, uh, well, remote work will be a facet of what we do going forward. We've put the infrastructure in place, something like 90% or 96 or so percent of our employees are, are highly in favor of it. If you weigh out all of the benefits to the drawbacks, it, it, it is better than, you know, commuting an hour plus to a downtown core and, you know, wrestling traffic and dealing with weather and all that. You can literally just roll out of your bed and animate. It is super duper convenient. You can, you can make a coffee whenever you want. Just, yes. I, I could have a machine right here. Oh boy. Is it awesome? Uh, I love it. Like, and I, I don't want to discount how valuable the studio experience is. I, I absolutely loved it. Um, the timing worked out for me personally, because I've lived that for, for a solid 15 years. I've had that experience as much as I love it. This is a new experience and I'm, I'm all for it. In fact, I'm doubling down on it. Like I've actually just sold my house yesterday to get one that I can build an even better home setup. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that. That's great. That's cool. And you know, while we are virtual first now, you know, the studio, the studio has new life with the new vision, you know, where it's like, what kind of meaningful work can we do there? We recently just, you know, opened our doors to have a client uh, come in for our dino daycare team, uh, the new project we're doing. And, you know, they had a blast. Like, it was a great time. And, you know, we're having meaningful, uh, you know, work being done together. So it's like client meetings. It's, you know, show and tells. It's like, what kind of animation workshops can we host in a space that's more meaningful for people to travel and get together? Um, but we're also looking now that, you know, things are lightening up. We're looking at what is our next in-person event? You know, can we can we do our town hall uh, it, for the summer in person and follow it with a social, you know, like like the good old days, like we're looking forward to doing those kind of things as well. So because we know it matters and it does matter to people. Right. Like that. That's the thing. The beauty about, you know, an animation studio is that. Um, everybody inspires everybody else, right? So we are looking for ways to, you know, carry that on in the studio. And we do master classes and host different types of events to share work, um, which is pretty cool, you know. Uh, but yeah, we're looking forward. We're looking forward to sort of, you know, a new a new way ahead for in person, you know, meetings. And hopefully, we can keep that social connection alive um, and, you know, capitalize on how successful we've been working virtually. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, opened some doors that we didn't have previously. So it's, and you know, another thing too, is like we reduce our footprint a little bit and it's like as technology leaders, you know, that's something to consider um, how much, you know, we're contributing to, uh, to the world. But yeah. In, in a more of a specific sense of how the workflow goes now that things are remote, again, there, there's there's benefits and drawbacks, but I think the benefits outweigh those drawbacks. Um, when we were in studio, now animating is is very akin to acting. It's a, it's a big portion of it. And I, I'm always a proponent of, hey, get up and act it out. That's how that's the easiest way to get to your answer is your acting decisions soonest. You, you, you act it out, you feel it, does it feel good? Great, then go do it. Um, rather than kind of sitting down and just guessing and then trial and error, right? So. Um, so in studio, if, a, if an animator was having trouble understanding, say, the balance of a character, I might even like shove them and just go, how did that feel? Do you see how how many hops did you have to catch your balance? That kind of a thing. I'd have, I'd have their permission first. It's OK. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, but uh, that kind of a thing, you know, I can't I can't shove you over the Internet now. But like but what we can do is so a drawback of being in studio was like we were all in rows of desks and everyone had two monitors and it's just rows and rows. And it was nice that we could just reach over and converse to each other. But when an animator was trying to figure out something and I wanted to show them something, 
I would, I would have to come over to their desk. Now their desk might have a completely different setup than mine. They got different hotkeys. It's all different orientation. I'm like, Oh, do wait, what's your hotkey? Oh, let me see. Uh, and I'm all disoriented. And I'm like, no, why don't you come over to my desk and I'll show you how, how I would do it. Now I got to pull open their scene on, on my setup and da, da, da. and then they, they're now out of their element walking over there and be like, okay, let me, let me try this over here with my different hot. Anyway. So the, the point is that was always tricky it's actually much easier now because I can have my display. I can show you exactly what's on my desktop right now. And right beside theirs, we can kind of compare what's going on. So um, opening scenes at the same time and being side by side comparisons is actually, you know, a, a really good way to, to show the difference of how you can improve something. Yeah, no, there's definitely some aspects from work from home that work so much better and that yeah. you wouldn't be able to have in a in a studio experience i mean same can be said otherwise you can't you can't shock your co-workers from home. <laughs> not that we do that at guru no no not 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 that we do that or encourage it but so, sometimes you need the good reference video <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but yeah no speaking speaking work from home work from studio how do we get to work with guru what kind of opportunities are you guys uh offering specific jobs and uh internship opportunities if that's something you guys are doing this year well my goodness let me let me tell you we have we have some internships lined up for the summer period for those that have co-ops um we are about to close those because they're about to start. Um, as we all know, you know, the, the graduation period is upon us and we, uh, we're looking for internships. We typically f find people in their third year. We start our search in earnest in January. Uh, so for those of you uh, that are in your co-op term next year, look for information from Guru in the early part of the year. But we also do marketing internships. We do accounting internships, you know, across the board. Um, and typically at any point when we have real production work for people to, to do, because uh, we want them to have the real world experience so they know what it's like. Um, and what to expect in, in uh, you know, their first experience at work. Um, but we are definitely hiring across all sorts of positions. Uh, we have some exciting yet to be named, I can't name them, shows coming up in the fall, which I'm thrilled uh, about. They are very exciting properties. Um, so keep your eyes peeled to Guru's website for announcements. Um, we are currently hiring on Dino Daycare for animators. We're looking for animators for the summertime. So late June, early July, mid July is the period of time we're looking for animators. So uh, multiple skill levels. So please apply, please come to the job fair. We'd love to meet you. We're also looking for layout artists. We're looking for previs artists. We are looking for production staff. Um, and of course, we are looking for, you know, in, in other sort of disciplines and realms, we're looking as we're starting new shows, we're looking for directors, we're looking for art directors. So, you know, if you are listening, and you are one of those talented people, we would love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could get some mentorship from Jima. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, right? Who wouldn't? Look at yeah. this. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Ema, along with Brennan and James Scott, who uh, Jody mentioned, those are two folks that work with us. And both of those fellows have pitched a show, gotten it greenlit, developed, and onto TV. Isn't that the dream? Isn't that the dream of like pretty much yeah. everyone who gets into this business? I've yeah. seen that happen now three times in these walls, um, virtual walls now, but uh, yeah. I've seen it. It's pretty amazing to see that that happen. It's a long road. People, you know, some, some may think that, oh, you got a, a a little couple doodles here and, and a hot idea maybe it's it's a it's a long road to get it onto tv i'll tell you that but it if you if you have the the idea and it's it's something that's cutting edge it's something that uh, will get you in viewership it's something that you're passionate about and you and your your heart's in the right place and um and you've got the drive oh boy it is it is it is not easy to to get a show off the ground um there's lots of ups and downs in it but i i hats off to the to the folks that, that can pull that off and, and get their dream visualized on screen it's, it's such an amazing thing to see yeah really exciting part of the industry that just you can have an idea and with a, a bit of luck and a lot of hard work you can you can create worlds and and characters and just mm -hmm. totally 
make stuff that like like Paw Patrol that's just absolutely crazy and is a worldwide phenomena that just like completely blows up and takes the world by storm. And mm -hmm. it's so exciting that you guys have stuff like that going on in the studio. Yeah, we, we do that all the time. Like we, we do our own internal properties. Like that's a co-production with, with Spin Master Toys, which we're, we love working with. They're excellent. Um, and, and we work very collaboratively with them and that's wonderful. But sometimes we create our own things from that are absolutely original ideas that are that are our are, are IPs. Uh, another one being True in the Rainbow Kingdom, very popular and it's worldwide now. Um, that was that was a, a company called Friends With You who made like these kind of inflatable cities, these like these playlands just to have kids, uh, you know, just enjoy and, and promote mindfulness. They're like, why don't we expand this into a whole show? And we're like, we got your back. And, <laughs> and we created it with them. And isn't that so cool? Like the visual style of it is just just amazing to see. Like it's it's just candy on screen. And mm -hmm. um, it's such a wonderful thing to, to watch that come to life. Yeah. That's so exciting. Uh, so we 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 talked about your incredible projects and how uh what positions you guys are looking for for people who are interested in joining them but what do you guys look for specifically within candidates what's important for you guys to to see and that you guys identify with as like this is the guru spirit this is the kind of stuff we want hmm. let's start with previs and layout since that's what we're looking for and that's in the very early stages of the production so let's let's go chronologically here so um Previous artists and layout artists. Uh, layout in 2D, uh, for those who don't know, means something completely different in 3D. In 2D, you're drawing perspective backgrounds, and you have to be a very good draftsman in, in that regard. In 3D, it's it's more assembly and, it, and it's setting up, but it, it's so much more beyond that. You're you're basically it, it, the uh, we all know there's 12 principles of animation. The most important principle, in my opinion, is staging. Staging is is the art of getting the audience to look at the important thing and have that important thing register to the audience in a meaningful way. And that starts with previs and layout. Being able to set it up in a way that the composition is saying, look here, look here, look here, don't miss that important thing. And the timing, getting the timing just right so that it's set up for the animators for success. So that they all they have to worry about at that point is just bringing the performance and nailing it. Uh, and not having to, you know, re rejig things to help the staging. So really strong layout artists who understand staging and understand to keep their eye on the on the the really important thing and have all their decisions revolve around that is what we look for in a layout artist. Is, is really really strong staging. Um, then once we get to animation, here I'll, I'll, I'll my entire 15 years uh, those thus far in the industry, I've been able to boil it down to to three main elements of what we look for 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 a successful performance. That is, and write this down if, if you could, clear, believable, entertaining, in that order. So clear, as in the staging, remember, got to, got to register the important thing. If it's just a confusing mess, no one's going to want to watch it. They'll change the channel, right? So it's got to be clear, and then it's got to be believable. Can't just be, you know, willy-nilly motions. They have to be motivated and, and with a, an understanding of what the character wants and what they're, what they're going for, and something that's relatable to the audience so they understand what that gesture really means. Body language is such a huge proponent of, of, of what, uh, such a huge component of, of what makes a scene successful. So understanding good, believable acting choices is great. And then if you can make it funny or interesting in some way on top of what the story is already providing, then bonus, you know, our animators, we give a lot of creative freedom to like add their own sort of small jokes in, in, in the performance. One example off the top of my head was uh, Humdinger uh, had to hide behind the bushes and he's always got his, his little kitten crew with him. And, and uh, so he, he, the Paw Patrol is coming. He's like, oh, doesn't want to get seen. He jumps behind the bushes and then the, the kittens follow him. The animator decided uh, I'm going to have this this kitten do a tuck and roll and his hat and his little hat falls off. And then he does an Indiana Jones and like pulls the hat at the last second. You know, that wasn't in the storyboard. They just added that. And it was such a little cute, you know, flair uh, that made it funny. So it's, it's ideas like that that we want to see animators bring to the table and, and have a lot of fun with it. That's wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so what kind of people we, we've gone over? what like what you guys look for but what kind of people do you want coming to talk to you guys at the booths you know like obviously layout artists and and animators um but like who else who should come stop by who should come check you guys out anyone who uh has a true passion for the art and the industry and, and wants to make an impression um i think most of us just know it, it's within us that that we have what it takes to to tell those stories. If, if you're the type that woke up at five in the morning with no alarm because they, you, you couldn't wait to eat cereal and watch cartoons, 
Um, that's exactly what my upbringing was. And that's, <laughs> that's how I knew. Um, I, I, I tell this story quite often, but when I was eight years old, I won an all Ontario story writing contest. And that was a very big achievement. Uh, there was a whole assembly at the school for me and I accepted an award and it was super nice. And my parents were there and I had no idea this was going to happen, but there's, and I was, and I was so blown away. And then everyone after was like, Oh, you've got a gift for writing. Do you, do you want to be an author? And I'm like, not really. Like, I don't, I like writing. It's fun, but it's not what gets me up in the morning. Um, it, it's cartoons that do that. So that's how I knew I wanted to be an animator and it's worked out for me. So if you if you have a similar story, if you can pinpoint that moment where you knew you loved animation, that's where you want to move your career. Let that be your compass, your guiding light, your North star, just keep following that feeling and you'll do fine. That's wonderful. What about you, Jody? What kind of people are you excited to meet at the uh, job? I mean, fair? I'm excited to meet people with passion too. You know, passion for what you do, regardless of the discipline. I'm looking for people that um, know who we are and like what we do. Um, you know, it's we always we always love people who who want to work at Guru. You know, who like our properties, who are excited to try new things. Um, you know, and I'm looking for people who. Um, genuinely love animation you know like that's like andrew said you know the the gist of it is like the passion like do you love what you do um we want to talk to you that's that's amazing and i hope everyone is watching and they're hearing this and they're getting themselves psyched up <laughs> to meet you guys so. i hope so we want to meet them yeah, no, and I'm sure I'm sure you guys are going to have a massive lineup that's probably going to go past four o'clock, which is that's our awesome. end time, and it's it's going to be great. But one thing that I hear from a lot of people when talking about job fairs and getting excited is a lot of them have no clue what to say. They don't know how to approach recruiters. They're like nervous and they're like, oh, how do how do I network? So what's what's your number one tip for approaching recruiters at job fairs? I think it's, you know, sort of what Andrew's saying, be clear, you know, what are you looking for? Don't come, don't, you know, we often get people that apply for multiple roles. And while you may be a generalist and you have skills in multiple disciplines, you know, think about the job you're applying for and the company you're applying to, mm -hmm. you know, is this something you, and, and tailor your reel, tailor your portfolio to the job you're applying for. Um, there's, you know, there's nothing more disappointing than talking to somebody who just blindly applied to a position. Um, so be specific uh, in what you're looking for, be focused in what you're looking for and be honest. You know, you don't have to fill, if you don't have much experience, you don't have to fill it with every, you know, course you took in high school. That's fine. You know, we're not, we, we get it. We get it. If you're just starting out, you don't need to fill with, you know, you don't have to add all that filler. Just tell us what your experiences are, what your passions are, and what you're hoping to learn, what your goals are. Like, have an idea of what of what you want to do, um, and be clear about it. And honestly, don't be afraid. We we love talking to you. Like, there's absolutely no reason to be afraid of talking to us. And I would strongly encourage. Just think about um, simple basics of etiquette. You know, when you're talking to recruiters, um, they want to hear from you. So if you have a counter offer somewhere else, let us know because often, oftentimes we'll counter back. Uh, so don't, you know, don't ever feel like you can't talk to us during the process. I would say be honest, be upfront um, about your expectations and your needs and your wants. Um, I hope that helps. I hope yeah. that makes sense. I think it does. What, what about you, Andrew? Do you, do you have any tips for approaching recruiters? Sure. Be yourself and, and just be cool. Be yourself. You know, there's like Jody said, there's no real reason to be nervous. We're, we're just normal, normal people, just, just like everyone. And, um, well, to put a fine point on it, I typically speak from my own experiences because they're, they're, you know, very close to me, obviously. Um, but when I was applying for schools, I was rejected at, at most of the top schools. But it was there was one in particular that uh, it was a postgraduate program that I, I applied to. Kind of, I didn't know what that meant or what really what it, what that implied. Um, but it meant that you had to have you know a whole number of prerequisite college courses before getting in. And I was applying directly at a high school. And after getting rejected by all these places, I'm like, well, there's not a chance I'm getting into a postgrad. I went to the interview anyway. And uh, actually, when they called to set me up for the interview, I was like, I'm sorry. When I applied, I I didn't know it was a postgrad, so I'm sorry to waste your time. 
And they were like, no, 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 the, uh, the, the uh, coordinator still wants to meet you. I'm like, all right, what do I got to lose? I showed up in jeans and the shirt of my favorite band. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm, I'm not getting in here, so whatever. So I didn't, I didn't put on a suit and tie or none of that. I'm like, I just showed up. I'm like, all right, here I am. What do you want to talk about? And I'm like, but I was blown away by the school. I was like, oh man, the, these monitors would be considered junk now, but you know, 15 years ago, I was like, whoa, they're so big. And um, but um, and so I was just impressed by the by the studio. And I was walking around. I was like. A character was modeling a snowman again by today's standards. That would be very lackluster. But I was like, "Whoa, that's a, such a real looking snowman!" And I was just, I was just very excited to see everything. And I think that, first of all, that caught uh, the eye of of the person who ended up taking me in. Um, and then we just talked about what do you, where, where do you see yourself? What do you want to work in? And I was like, I really just want to reach a, a very large audience because uh, I, I live to make things that make people laugh or, or get entertained in some way. And I just want to expand that into the largest audience that I can get to and on the biggest projects I can get to. Um, and he was like, that's sort of, that's the right way to think about it, man. And then the rest is history. Um, he, he accepted me to the program and uh, it, it turned out to be the most meaningful mentor I've ever had in my life. And uh, I'll never forget that. So even if you think you don't have a chance, just be yourself and, it might work out. It did for me. That's so inspiring. I love that. <laughs> uh, so you you obviously made an impression on um, um, uh, your interviewer there for the college. Uh, so I'm wondering, what to you guys makes a candidate memorable? Or do you have someone who like, you met them years ago and like to this day, it's like, I still remember them. Like, I'll, I'm never going to forget this person I met at this networking event. <laughs> Um, it's hard, it's, it's hard to put your finger on, but sometimes you just see a spark and you just know, and that's where I sometimes put my rock star guarantee when, and when I really mean it, uh, th by the way, what I mean is sometimes I can look at an artist and I've only used this term maybe five times in, throughout my, uh, recruiting career, but sometimes I look at an artist and I go, I guarantee you that's a, that you're going to be a rock star. I don't tell them that because I don't want to make them have expectations of themselves that they you know might get nervous about or anything but mm -hmm. in my own kind of in my own internally i'm like that person's going to be a rock star i know it and then it's so exciting to watch them grow and then their first few shows i'm like they're getting it they're getting it and then boom i was right i'm like that's the most exciting thing but when i'm when i think i'm really really right i don't just say i guarantee it i say i guarantee they're going to be a rock star <laughs> so uh it's very rare that i pull out that accent but when i do i mean it um and you just know like i'm, I'm sorry i wish i could tell you that there are specific details, specific qualities that stand out, but sometimes it's they're different for everyone. But sometimes they just they they connect and they get it. The most recent one um, was just just every question that I asked, they they just answered in, in such a way that made me think that they were going to be a good decision maker. Because as important as being a great artist is, as important as being agreeable and a nice person to work with, those are all great qualities and very important. In the end, you're going to make a million and one decisions every single day. Like as an, especially as an animator, you're not just making big decisions. Like what's the character going to do? You're making decisions like how curly is that finger? Is it this or is it this? Like it's so many little decisions. So being a good decision maker is key. And part of the interview process is asking questions that sort of give us an indication of wh what's their level of decision making. If, if it's a lot of getting stumped and I ask them a simple question, they're like, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Then that would give me a little bit of pause because they're going to fa be faced with a lot of decisions every day that they're going to need to answer quickly. So mm -hmm. that's one little tip I'll give you is that try to ha try to have, even if you don't think it's a good answer, answer something like try not to leave this hanging. Yeah. What about you, Jody? Who's, yeah, who's your I, most think, I, 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 I think as well, you know, we meet so many people and talk to so many people. I mean, I think the one, you know, the people that are most comfortable with themselves, and confident, I always stick in my mind because uh, they're true to themselves and they're honest and upfront with you. And it's 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 rare sometimes. I know people get nervous, um, but just be you know be be who you are. Be plain. Don't be afraid to be a little bit vulnerable and ask for what you want. Um, and be clear. And and you know I think that is so important um when we meet people and you know and sometimes you know it's like have fun when i know that people are enjoying it i can see their passion and they have fun and they're relaxed 
uh, enough to be confident in, you know, mm-hmm. um, their, their attitude. It's just, it's really something that, you know, sticks with me. Yeah, no, that's, that's really exciting. And I, I love that you guys have had such great moments with people that you've met through recruiting events and that you've, you've seen those sparks and you guarantee, I don't think I got that voice right, but, (laughs) um, but yeah, no, thank you so much, you guys for joining. I think that's all the time we have, but super, super appreciate you guys coming on, telling us what gurus all about, giving some tips and tricks. So people, are ready to meet you guys on Monday during our job fair. It's going to be such a great time. So for those of you watching at home, if you have not joined our job fair discord server yet, do it. It's going to be such a great time. We've got so many amazing studios coming at you. So keep an eye out for these lives because we are not done doing them. Uh, Thank you so much, Andy and Jody, for joining us today and telling us everything about Guru. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, thanks so much for your time and for inviting us. Our pleasure. And you you smashed it. You're a fantastic host, Sabrina. (laughs) Good job. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. Oh, nice talking to you. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time on another Taffy Live. Thanks. Take care. Take care.